During my time in elementary and secondary school, I could easily walk the fine line between being too cool while not giving much of a fuck and secretly being an absolute, undeniable teacher's pet. The pet is a goody two-shoes who aspires to be the apple of the teacher's eyes that occasionally ends up with a bit of a brown nose. Everyone hates the pet. However, I was different in the sense that it was in my blood. I was actually a big nerd and secretly lived for the attention of my teachers because my own mother was a teacher. Being loved by a teacher felt like being loved by my mom. It felt safe and familiar to be seen when oftentimes I felt like I was an unmemorable person. I lived for the validation of my teachers but wanted to go through school appearing cool because other kids often looked down upon those who would remind the teacher that homework was due that day. <laughs> A mistake I never made, so I would not blow my cover. <laughs> I grew up in classrooms while waiting for my mom to finish her work in the late afternoons. I remember watching her organize countless floppy disks filled with files, and she would let me peel the perforated edges off the printed paper from a massive machine in her classroom. Being in a class felt like home for me. It was safe and familiar because it's where I spent time with my mom, away from everyone else. It was our time that felt special. I was always a favorite because I could empathize with teachers. I saw their human side when most saw the mean adult in the classroom telling them to do better in their spelling. Even when my fourth grade teacher, Mr. Soto, was telling us weird shit, like the Milky Way was made by the Greek god Heracles, Throwing up breast milk across the sky, which was so relevant that we were supposed to be learning about the California missions. <laughs> Mr. Soto was also an eccentric friend of our family. He had a thin mustache and gel in his hair that made it look shiny and impenetrable to fingers, kind of like a Lego hairpiece. <laughs> Y'all, I'm nervous. <laughs> I saw the human side of teachers and what they went through because I always observed my mom. I also loved chaotic teachers. <laughs> they are often the most memorable. Especially now as a teacher myself, I look back fondly on the unforgettable ones like Mr. Tigerson. <laughs> He was a middle-aged man with unkempt hair, scruff, and uniform of slacks and button-ups. He was in hindsight wildly unstable, and I probably, <laughs> probably should have realized that when he had us call him Lord Nosengeist, <laughs> which was just his name backwards. <laughs> he would sit in his filthy pink armchair and no. stare at us while he played a viper slap and yelled the Lion King theme song louder and louder. <laughs> He would have us place our papers on his armchair, and he would take all of our work and dump it into his fish tank, containing his decrepit goldfish, and tell us, Grades aren't real! Free yourself! <laughs> that also should have been a sign. <laughs> Even when he had attacked the four-foot Santa lawn ornament he kept in the corner, and spin kick it across the room in the middle of us taking tests, we probably should have reported that. <laughs> However, I didn't care how unstable he was. I loved his class and everything about him. He taught me that you shouldn't care about impressing people because they will truly remember you for being yourself. I recently emailed him, telling him he is still my favorite teacher, and he responded with, I consider myself more of an entertainer, really. <laughs> Which is an answer that was precisely on brand for him. <laughs> By 11th grade, I had put off taking the classes that I needed to graduate that I couldn't bring myself to give a shit about. Mama didn't raise a quitter, but she sure as hell raised a procrastinator. <laughs> I was dreading taking biology. As a student who took AP English and history classes in stride, the math and sciences were my personal versions of hell. I knew how important they were, and I knew how they were beautiful ways of explaining the world around us, but I also didn't give a shit. 
I preferred reading Vonnegut and learning about the caning of Senator Charles Sumner in 1856. <laughs> because I was good at that. Writing a vocabulary came easily to me, but apparently not public speaking. <laughs> but there I was on the first day, walking up the ramp into the trailer classroom that rumbled underneath my footsteps, which did wonders for the self-esteem of a chunky teenage girl. Then I saw her. She was close to my height and had longish bleach blonde hair. She wore khakis and a button down. She probably got from Wayne Bryant. <laughs> she wore very little makeup, yet had too much blush on. Or maybe it was her addiction. <laughs> she was in her 40s and seemed slightly dowdy. I never heard of her or saw her around before, so I knew it was her first year at our school. I should have known it was her first year teaching because her face had a look of panic on it. I imagined facing a classroom of hormonal, judgmental, angry teenagers who sometimes smell bad and have shitty attitudes isn't intimidating at all, right? We filed in and sat down at random desks. The ninth graders looked so nervous with their massive backpacks and their trapper keepers exposed in their open folders. We were not of the same breed. These kids still wore Heelys, and I had a fucking car that I would redline trying to get home from school. Yeah. I was a baby punk with pink hair, and wearing more and more black clothing while embracing ska, alternative rock, and everything else that had a bad attitude tied with it. I aspired to look like an interesting person. I didn't want to become what at the time I considered to be the worst thing ever, dowdy, as you can tell. <laughs> I was also a general dick, because I was a major upheaval <laughs> during that time. <laughs> I was dealing with burgeoning bipolar disorder and my skyrocketing anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> it was becoming more and more difficult to feel in control of myself and the image I have of my own identity. It was wavering and changing, and I was in desperate need of some control. I was behaving more erratically, and people were starting to notice unbeknownst to me. I was still able to keep my pet identity a secret, though. The secret need to appease teachers while trying to keep an arm's length distance to maintain my coolness was methodical. I thought that maybe if I could find a way to keep it all together on the outside of peers, the familiarity and safeness I felt with adults was like my mom to keep the ADHD, anxiety, bipolar, everything else going on in my head wrapped up too. It was survival for me. Here. <laughs> she introduced herself to the class with a voice that was practically quivering. Hi, everyone. My name is Miss McMillan. McMillan, and we're going to learn about biology this year. She smiled apprehensively while we all sat in some fake silence, staring back at her. <laughs> I could see her fidgeting as she stumbled on her introductions, despite my tough exterior. I couldn't help but feel bad for her. It was like seeing my mom trip and it made me cringe. Miss McMillan was stumbling even worse on her words now. It was hard to watch. Hey, I'm Victoria. Are you new here? I don't know if I've seen you before. No, I'm brand new. I'm also a new teacher, so if you all couldn't tell I'm a little nervous, she said. I fucking knew it. <laughs> I cracked and was going to ask her various questions about her life and what she liked. Thank you. I could tell she was thankful that someone was pulling the silence, even if it was just me dominating it. She smiled at me and I felt my little brown noser's heart grow inside. <laughs> it started innocently enough. I would chatter up as students were filing in and heading to their desks. I'd ask her questions that students normally wouldn't give a shit about. I slowly found out her entire life story. She lived with her mom and was Buddhist. She wanted to have a family and her kids, but felt she was getting too old and the dating market had dried up. After I got skaties, disgusting, I know, public school, y'all. She made me feel better by telling me remedies for the scars that left from scratching my skin. Her mom once had a heart attack on an airplane and meditation saved her life. You know. Normal teenager to adult conversation. <laughs> I think I won her over when she was complaining to us that she just wanted to get married already and have four kids of her own, and I told her, Miss McMillan, you gotta get that ring ring 
on your fang fang before your biological clock goes ding ding. <laughs> I even heard that from. <laughs> Maybe from one of the illicit erotica books that sneak read at school? <laughs> I had never seen anyone laugh so hard at something I said. Looking back, I realized I was harsh coming from a kid. <laughs> and probably stung, but I got away with it. I'm sure I may have hurt her feelings considering she shared some vulnerable topics with us at times. I do regret saying it, but back then, I didn't care. I was too busy trying to hide that I was a total brown noser, and that my mental state had me in a chokehold that saw no consequences. Can I get a little cheer? Sorry, guys. <laughs> I would eventually stop paying attention in biology class, a sin from the secret nerd. It was probably because of my acute ADHD or anxiety, and also because she wasn't the most riveting teacher to have. I would have a makeup case that would roll open filled with different lipsticks, mascaras, eyeliner, and everything else that goes on a face. I would do an entire face of makeup at 11 a.m. for no reason other than to waste time. She took notice of this and never scolded me for not paying attention. Paying attention. She would instead compliment my shaky eyeliner and my bright red lipstick. She was kind, which I pretended not to notice, in front of the other kids that secretly cherished. I don't know what she saw in me. Maybe a daughter figure? Helper? Even a friend in the middle of the chaos of a high school classroom? I think what I wanted out of the exchange was the familiarity of love I felt from my mom when things were shifting out of control in my head. I boldly began to take control of her desk. How she ever let me do it is beyond me now, but back then, I did whatever I wanted. I would hop on Miss McMillan's computer and play games that weren't inhibited by the protective internet walls that plagued all the school computers. I would specifically play the Great Sperm Race. <laughs> Just to see how much I could get away with. The entire year, I did one single biology worksheet <laughs> while everyone held had stacks of papers they had to turn in every day. Every time progress reports would come out, I would be nervous to see my grade, because I was sure she would be failing me, but each report would have an A next to biology. When we had tests in class every few weeks, I would glaze over my textbook, not understanding what the fuck cellular respiration was. <laughs> 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 I would naturally take the test and bomb. However, every time I got my scantron back, she would have the answer key next to my test so I could change my answers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was wildly unethical to educate <laughs> And I ate it all up <laughs> without taking a second to think on whether it was right. I had seen what good teaching was already. I had seen my mom and selected others change the direction of my education for the better before this, and this was going downhill fast. But was I loving it? Fuck yeah. <laughs> the year passed by smoothly in biology with Miss McMillan, and I had somehow become the queen of the classroom. All the freshmen would talk to me as if I was wise. Yes! <laughs> I'm saying jokes like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was because I had somewhat of a command. When I spoke, people listened. When I wanted to play on a computer, I did what I wanted and no one, even the teacher, would stop me. Freshmen would wave to me during breaks and passing periods. <laughs> it was a powerful feeling. <laughs> One day I was in class in a particularly bad mood. I felt as though my head was crushing down on itself while also wanting to explode. Everyone was talking and turned around in their seats, chatting to each other. 
I looked up in the mirror in the midst of my awful makeup routine and saw her. The blush on her cheeks looked more pale than usual. Her mouth was a grim, straight line, and her hair was pulled back in a stress ponytail to Barrett. Then I noticed her eyes starting to tear because her class was out of control. I couldn't take it. Oh, and I also had to blow my cover. She needed to be rescued. Miss McMillan was the homie. She let me do whatever I wanted and treated me well. I screamed. Everyone shut the fuck up! She's talking to you guys! Everyone spun around in their seats to look at me. Cool kid Victoria was losing her shit. That's the problem with freshmen. You don't respect her when she talks and you ignore her. <laughs> of course, I would ignore her too, but hindsight is twenty twenty. <laughs> I pointed around the room at everyone, especially the girl who I know gave me skaties <laughs> earlier in the year. I continued like some kind of anger interpreter. <laughs> I will shut you the fuck down if you don't pay attention. She's nice as hell. Do what she says. Their mouths hung open and they stared at me. They then all slowly turned around and opened their folders and textbooks. She looked at me and mouthed, thank you. I then went back to doing my makeup in front of them while not realizing <laughs> The next thing after I realized the gravity of what I did, I went to class and called for a meeting. Not Miss McMillan, but me, the student. I said to the class, okay guys, I'm sorry, I flipped my lid, you guys are totally taking over her though, and that's not cool. Oh shit, just turn already. <laughs> no, no, you were right, we should have been listening. They turned around and apologized to her, and she smiled. All felt right in chair number 840. <laughs> I wound up passing the class with an A after doing one single sheet of homework the entire year. <laughs> Even my parents asked me why I never had homework. I would lie, of course. My mother, the super teacher, probably would have reported her to the school. It was awesome. On the last day of school, I gave her a hug. It felt warm and familiar, even though I had never given her a hug before. It had been a fun year where I got everything I wanted without consequences. Until 12th grade. <laughs> when I was in Earth and Space Science, and I was completely fucked because I didn't even know what a damn mitochondria was. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you need to know what homeostasis was in order to get by. I've reflected a lot as a teacher about those who educated me and their quirks. Whether it was Mr. Tigerson yelling at us to never join the military because recruiters are liars. <laughs> or the other teachers who blur my memories. I'm thankful for them all. I wouldn't undo anything about the education I received, or my biology class, the education I didn't receive. <laughs> having control in Ms. McMillan's room was the closest thing to having a group in my life for a long time, and I didn't realize that until I was gone. It was hard when I left the class and moved forward into other challenging subjects while mental illness was still kicking my ass. I often thought back wistfully to when I could skate through biology, doing my makeup and chatting with people while receiving help from a teacher when I should have been pushed to reach my potential. While my mental illness would continue to ravage me for many years to come, during that time I was appreciated, respected, and perhaps even loved by a teacher who probably saw that I needed some grace to grow and maybe needed an unethical helping hand. <laughs> As an educator, I think it taught me the lessons that, one, boundaries are necessary for student and teacher relationships. <laughs> two, helping students does not mean cheating them out of an education they rightfully deserve. And three, kids will remember when I go a little too heavy on the blush. <laughs> Despite it all, I appreciate your kindness towards me and good intentions. I try not to be too harsh, as I remember that just as I was learning in school, so was she. I may have kept my love for her and all my teachers mostly secret, but the ones who mattered truly knew. 
I would whisper to them that they hadn't collected homework that day. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.